a new adventure begins. I'm gonna go pick up my mom and then off to Washington DC we go. Turn left onto Florida 953 North Northwest 42nd Avenue. The Lewis and Clark road trip begins. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be, because I'm free in my RV. It is Friday morning in Miami, and naturally there's a little bit of traffic on State Route 836, the Dolphin Expressway going towards downtown. The white dome on the right is the Florida Marlins Stadium. Lone Depot Park, I believe it is called now, and I can understand the need for sponsors and all that, but Lone Depot Park just does not roll off the tongue now, does it? They're building a double-decker bridge here over the Miami River. Hopefully, it'll streamline things. Here's the real bottleneck every single time, trying to get on I-95 North. Hopefully, after all this construction is over, they might make it into a two-lane exit. One can only hope, right? We're home free. I-95 North seems to be pretty clear and we're going to be on this road for the better part of the next two days. Our first stop is going to be at La Mesa, a Winnebago dealership where they are going to replace one of the solar panels. There were two screws missing and my only explanation is that someone might have tried to steal it, but I guess we'll never know. All I know is that a couple of days ago I was getting back from Pelicamp and someone was honking at me and at the beginning I thought he was like a viewer saying hi so I waved back and no, he was frantically pointing towards the roof of the trailer so I stopped and lo and behold, the panel was coming loose. It is almost impossible for those screws to come off so clean on their own so my only hypothesis is that someone removed them and somehow didn't have the time to finish the job. What do you guys think? And here we are. While they replace the damaged solar panel, I'm going to take mom to Fort Pierce. Well, we dropped off Minitini 3 at La Mesa here. They're gonna replace that solar panel. And uh, now we're going to Fort Pierce for lunch. And uh, we've been there before. So. Yeah, let's go somewhere nice. We're going to do the touristy thing and eat at this place called Krabby's Dockside. It's right on the marina. Yep, let's park right here. Well, here we are downtown Fort Pierce, Fort Pierce Marina. We're gonna have uh, we're gonna have some lunch, some early lunch here. Let's do it. By the way, I'm traveling with mom. Gotta get a table with a view, right? A cold local IPA, of course. And the catch of the day with corn and coconut rice. And this fabulous view. Well, that was really good. We gotta get on one of those wildlife boat tours one of these days. Actually, here we've got some wildlife without having to take the tour. I'm so excited to be working with Omaze once again to offer you the chance to win a Sprinter van with an $80,000 eco-friendly conversion, all while supporting a great cause, the Micro Works Foundation. 
Omis launched with a mission to transform typical charitable giving. They give people the chance to dream big and win a once in a lifetime prizes, all while helping nonprofits make the world a better place. Now, for the prize this time, one winner will win an adventure ready Mercedes Benz 4x4 Sprinter van with an $80,000 eco friendly conversion by Vansmith with rooftop solar panels, green package. I mean, this thing is loaded. It's got all the amenities, including a full size bed, wool insulation, a carbon offset package, and it even has 5,000 pounds of tow capacity. <laughs> Let me tell you, I would love to take this van to the desert and do some exploring. Now, your donations. Support the Micro Works Foundation, which is on a mission to help close the skills gap by challenging the stigmas and stereotypes that discourage people from pursuing the millions of available jobs. They're redefining the definition of a good education and a good job because they don't think that a four year degree is the best path for most people. Your donations will help support their Work Ethics Scholarship Program, which awards future tradespeople who will work smart and hard. Now, for your chance to win a Sprinter van with an $80,000 eco-friendly conversion, all while supporting Micro Works Foundation, go to omaze.com slash travelingrobert. Look for a link in the video description. There are so many fish here by the marina. I don't know if they are naturally occurring or they're just here because people feed them. It is fascinating. They have live music at Marina Square. This is one of those cases of being in the right place at the right time. Well, check it out. This was a pleasant surprise here to find the, you know, live band at the park here, all the fish and and the food was actually really good. Service was sluggish, but the food, the, the fish was amazing. Now let's go back to La Mesa and see the, if the RV is ready. Everything went great at La Mesa. We have a brand new solar panel, and uh, now next up, Bucky's. Well, Mom has never been to Bucky's, so I thought I'd take her so she can see what all the fuzz is about. We had to make our pilgrimage one more time to Bucky, so here we are. Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> Let's make a long story short, eventually we got to Jacksonville and shortly after, the Florida-Georgia state line, the St. Mary's River. We're gonna stay at Walmart. Welcome to Georgia. Oh, thank you. I 
95 is not very scenic in Georgia and the Carolinas, so we're just gonna stop at south of the border just to corroborate that it is still there. I had heard rumors that it was getting demolished and I'm happy to report it is still here. Tonight, we're gonna stay at the Rocky Mound KOA, just about 30 miles south of the Virginia state line. It's a brand new day. We didn't get to do anything here, just a comfortable night with full hookups. Now, off to Washington, D.C. we go. Welcome to Virginia. Thank you. GPS wants me to take the Beltway, but we're just gonna punch through the center of town. Oh no, black helicopter overhead. Check it out, I think it is going to land at the Pentagon. Arriving at any major city, and our nation's capital probably even more so can be a thrilling experience, if a little stressful one too. I mean, you get to recognize iconic landmarks like the Washington Monument, but there's also traffic and the unfamiliarity with the area. Here we get a glimpse at the Capitol building and the Library of Congress, but it is hard to see from the interstate. Today we're staying at Cherry Hill Park in College Park, Maryland, probably the closest RV park to Washington DC, at least that's what they claim. We made it here to Cherry Hill Park. It's bitterly cold and uh, I'm filling up my fresh uh, water tank because it is very likely that it is going to freeze tonight so we don't have to we don't want to run into any trouble but I mean we, we even had some snow flurries here until just a few seconds ago. Well now let's get something to eat and, and go to the city. Well, okay, came by this place called the Hard Times a Cafe, which is basically the local saloon, you know, when everybody, where everybody knows your name. And uh, except nobody knew ours, but that's pretty good. It's pretty good. As a House of Cards fan, I've always wanted to come into DC at night and maybe reproduce some of those iconic night shots from the intro. And now is as good a time as any. Driving through the streets at night is really a unique experience. Lincoln Park here on the left. And this is Capitol Hill, one of the oldest and largest historic neighborhoods here in DC. With all these row houses of different architectural styles. Pretty soon we'll be able to see the back of the Capitol building.
That would be the Hirschhorn Museum of Modern Art. Not quite the glamorous night shots I was hoping for, but that's the best I can do from the car. In order to achieve the type of night photography I want to do, I would have to get out and walk. And this is the thing, Washington has changed a bit since the first time I was here in 1994. Everything seemed uh, much more accessible back then. I recall there was even a street going by the front of the Lincoln Memorial. Now, all I can hope for is a shot of the back. It's still pretty cool to drive around the capital at night, let me tell you. There, that's the White House. One last view of the capital before we start heading back. This is, by the way, going to be a little bit of a short episode because the next one, oh, the next one is going to be action packed. On the next one, we'll visit the Jefferson Memorial, the cherry blossom peeping sites only locals know about. We'll have an IPA with Jim and Paula. We'll visit the National Museum of American History and go for a frigid stroll along the National Mall. Then on the next day, we'll go back to Tidal Basin to see more cherry blossoms and try to replicate that picture of my mom from 1958. Then Martin Luther King, Lincoln and much more. I'm free in my RV. Yeah, I'm riding, riding, riding. I'm riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be. Cause I'm free in my RV. Yeah. 